Hello, and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show on Facebook where we talk to you about one cool product that we've been testing out and playing with here at PC Labs. I'm Tom Brandt, this is Sasha Segan, and today we have a very cool smartphone, the LG V30. Yes, the uh, LG V30 is, uh, is a really neat smartphone. Um, it has two features that absolutely jump out at you. And when I think of what differentiates the LG V30 from uh, the Samsung Galaxy S8 and the iPhones and all of that, there are really two things that I want to call out. Um, and of course, if you folks have any questions about the LG V30, please ask us. We have Pete taken the questions, as he does every day, uh, about the LG V30 or any of the other phones that are, that are coming up uh, this fall, because there's a lot of new phones coming out that fall, this fall. Um, so the two big features that I want to call out are um, Band 71 and the wide-angle camera. Okay. And now Band 71 is T-Mobile's new 600 megahertz network. They bought this Spectrum earlier this year for $8 billion. It's nationwide. They're just starting to build it out. But the promise of this is that this is going to really improve T-Mobile's coverage in rural and exurban areas where they may not currently have coverage. Right. And this is this, these, these, this Spectrum is formerly used for like... Um, analog TV broadcast, right? Yeah, this was your this UHF was old, channels yeah. 32 to 51. Okay. okay. Specifically 32 to 51. Okay. And <laughs> the reason they can't build it out nationwide right now is that they're still waiting for some right. of the old UHF TV stations to move out of their channels. Right, right. Because part of the deal was that they would buy the spectrum and they would give these channels up to three years to vacate. So they have 10 phases that they're rolling out the spectrum in. Right. And, uh, but the, the V30 is the first phone to support this new spectrum. So in terms of future coverage, you're going to get better future coverage on T-Mobile with the V30 than on any other phone currently on the market. So does that mean that if you do live in one of these areas, like a far suburbs or rural areas, that you should buy this now? Or should you wait until, I mean, like what the phone is ready now, but is, yeah. is the coverage ready now? Uh, the coverage is not, no. no. no the coverage okay. is right now, right now there is no differentiating 600 megahertz coverage yet. It's, it's basically being tested in two metro areas where it's not making a big difference in coverage. The, it's mostly being run so that the T-Mobile tech team can make sure everything works right, properly. Sure. Um, but as we get to the end of the year, we're going to start seeing these coverage areas rolling out. And they've said, um, I think, central Pennsylvania, eastern North Carolina, um, those both come to mind. Uh, we have a story about 600 megahertz where so, we list some of these areas. Right, so that's a very, like, a very niche use for this phone. But yeah. the, probably the, the, the second thing you mentioned, the camera, lots of people are going to be interested in that regardless of the service that they have. So what, what about the camera? Yeah, I love the <laughs> wide-angle camera on here. And this is, of course, this is a signature LG feature. And it's on the LG G6. It was on the LG V20. Um, basically, it's a, it's a dual-camera phone, as you can see, with a 16-megapixel uh, main camera and a 13-megapixel wide-angle camera. Format we've seen before. I mean, that's right. something new. Yeah. Right. But where, um, where Samsung and Apple go 2x zoom with their cameras, LG goes wide. And it's just a different philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, you find that, like, if you're... Um, you know, if you're at a, if you go to a lot of concerts and you want to zoom in on the people performing on the stage, then you want a Samsung or an Apple. Right. But if, say, you go to um, uh, uh, kids' sports games and you want to be able to take a photo and then zoom out to see the whole field, then you want this LG. And uh, let me show you how it works. So I call up the camera and there's one tree and there's three trees. And if I tap on three trees, whoa, it gets wider. And of course, wider in portrait mode means taller. Whoa, it goes back. And now um, we find that the wide angle camera has some, uh, there's some uh, distortion okay. in the yeah. edges. It definitely right. fish eyes, right. but not in a horribly unattractive way. And now the, the, the selfie camera also wide angles. So you have standard and then 
wide. And this is great for people who um, like to take a lot of selfies with groups of friends or family. Mm -hmm. Like if you... If you're are, holding this out and you've got like, you know, 10 people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to feel like a dork with a right. selfie stick right. because you're trying to get the distance to get your group into the photo, you know, the, the LG's approach with the wide-angle camera could really speak to you. Yeah, I think that that's actually something that uh, that lots of people on vacation will use. And the other the other nice thing about the back where where the two cameras are is that the fingerprint sensor is is low enough that you're not going to be like constantly touching the camera and getting fingerprints. Yeah, over, this right? is a big advantage over the over the Galaxy models, where uh, the Galaxy fingerprint sensor, of course, is right here next to the camera lens. Very mistakable for a lens. Right, <laughs> LG's fingerprint sensor camera button. I mean, fingerprint sensor power button is. Uh, in a really natural place to put your finger when you're holding the phone. Let's go ahead and take a question uh, from the audience. Is it comfortable to hold? Yes, I mean, I people know I prefer narrower phones. This phone is about a little less than three inches wide, which is a little wider than I prefer, mm -hmm. but uh, that is very much a personal preference, and it's definitely comfortable in the hand in that it is, you know, it is cool and smooth. Uh, it is thin and light. Um, <laughs> Now, unfortunately, the thinness and lightness means that the battery life uh, in heavy use is not terrific. And that's one of the downsides. When you here. say not terrific, let's say, like, can you be more specific about that? Like yeah, we got, we got more around, around, uh, around five hours of very heavy use, uh -huh. which is uh, a little less than you see from, say, the iPhone 8 Plus. Okay, and what yeah. about the Galaxy and S8? Considerably less than I saw from the Galaxy S8. Which is one of our, our top yes. performing batteries. Yes. Uh, can we take another question? Someone's saying that when they use the LG V10's uh, camera heavily, they would have overheating issues. Did you notice anything like that with the V30? No, no. That's something. That's something that's been. Um, the V10 would be. Um, was that the Snapdragon 808 generation? That that generation of Snapdragons had all sorts of overheating shenanigans, hmm. I believe. And so uh, the. But we're up to Snapdragon 835 now, right. and there's no overheating issues. Right. They've perfected the, th the thermal. I mean, this, these phones, as phones get thinner and they're you know, very thermally constrained, the, you, there's not much room for, for no, but also, heat. And... Qualcomm specifically had one really bad oh, okay. year in, tw in 2015 mm -hmm. when um, a, lot of their, a lot of their premier chips were overheating in devices. But uh, they recovered from that with the 820 generation, right. and that would be the V20. And so, uh, yeah, the 835 is here. No heat issues. No, well, so not we, so much. Yeah. We talked about the camera. We're going to move on to some other stuff. But one, uh, there's one caveat to the camera that yes. you were showing me before we started this show. Do you want to explain what that is? Yeah, and, and, and this is kind of the biggest reason I didn't give the phone an editor's choice. <coughs> and that is because in low light, um, LG's JPEG algorithm performs some really intense noise reduction stuff that um, I believe damages the quality of the photos. Now, what's, what's interesting and a little tragic here is that this is not about the ability of the camera to collect light. They say this is an f1.6 camera that's on par with the best other cameras. And when we looked at the raw images, they didn't have these problems. This is entirely down to LG's JPEG encoding software. And so if we take it to the big board, <laughs> you see here, um, you see here uh, a, a girl's face captured at night right. um, with the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 and then with the LG V30. And now this one's bigger because uh, the V30 has 16 megapixels, whereas the Galaxy Note 8 has 12, and this is a um, and this is a pixel by pixel crop. So, um, and you see that the Galaxy Note 8 image is is truer, whereas the V30 image does really weird things to the bridge of her nose and her mouth. So essentially, the noise reduction has resulted in, in essentially more noise, more noise in more which noise. is the opposite yeah. of what you want. And you don't always see that. For instance, this was a relatively low light photo. Yeah. Okay, and. I can't, I can't, blowing it up just shows artifacts that our website is creating. Right, it doesn't right, actually, sure. um, but this, is a, and, and it's not as bad in this photo. But if you go to pixel by pixel in this photo, you'll see it too. So I really hold out hope that LG will issue a software update mm -hmm. that will improve 
uh, that'll improve this situation. So basically, the hardware for the, is excellent here. Yes. It's just a matter of you know LG figuring out right. the, 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 the best way to process these photos. And if you want to photos. shoot in RAW, or you want to shoot in manual to some extent, you'll get around this problem. Okay. But the vast majority of people shoot in auto. Right. Now, and shooting in RAW, uh, that's going to fill up the phone very quickly. How, what, how much storage does this phone have? Uh, this, this has 64, 64 gigs of storage, about 50 is available, but also you have a micro SD card slot. Okay. And so you can put in a 256 gig card and just go to town. Right. And now I also want to mention uh, another, uh, another flagship feature that um, I kind of feel like the jury's still out on. Um, which is LG likes to make a lot about the phone's sound quality mm. with something called a quad DAC. Okay, now they have a standard headphone jack, mm -hmm. and supposedly they have a beautiful special digital to audio analog converter that makes music. A software, this is again, yeah, we're software, about software that makes okay. music unusually good through the headphone jack. Okay. And now I found that, um, yes, they have some really nice and interesting filters and equalization options. But the quality isn't necessarily better than other high-quality Snapdragon 835 phones. And I do wonder if some of the audiophiles out there are having a little bit of placebo effect on that. Mm -hmm. Either yeah. that or they have, you know, amazing ears. I know my ears aren't amazing. <laughs> I mean, basically, yeah, if you're looking at sound processing, the chip does a lot of it, and they've just added this... You think no, on no, top they have a special chip. They have, they have, they have a, a special, special chip. chip. They have a special chip. Okay. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is, audio quality is very, very, very good. And if you want to listen to music, it is a very, very, very good phone, mm -hmm. but not necessarily better in my mind than the Galaxy Note 8. Right. So. You, you're going to choose this for other factors than just the the DAC. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Let's take another question. We got someone asking for a drop test, of course. No. <laughs> How durable is it? Um, I mean, it is not. It's it's waterproof. But it is not particularly durable like other non-rugged phones. Right. I mean, you have um, you have this bowed out 2D gla uh, 2.5D glass screen, which means that when it uh, drops on its face, the screen has a you know reasonable chance of cracking. Right. It's Gorilla Glass, but everything is nowadays. Yeah. And one thing that that not just phones, we're seeing now lots of consumer tech products that are they have this military standard uh, um, um, protection. They follow the military standard for, for, for protection, but that doesn't mean that it's going to you know, be intact if you drop it. That just means it's protected against dust, water, things like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, so this, is, this, is, this is IP68. You can, you, know, you can drop it in the ocean. Right. You just don't want to drop it On onto rocks. concrete. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, I think, yeah, do we have another question? Someone's thinking of upgrading to the V30 or the Note 8 from the Galaxy 8, uh, S8 Plus. Which do you think is a better option? I think that you're rich. Um, I think that the, uh, I mean, the, the thing is, like, how long have you had an S8 Plus? 20 minutes? <laughs> um, the, neither of those phones is an $800 upgrade from an S8 Plus, which you spent $800 for six months ago. Right. You know? Um, some people like six-month upgrades. I, I guess so. I guess so. I, I mean, I would say that overall, our choice is overall our choice is the Note 8. Right. It has a brighter screen. The Note mm -hmm. 8 screen is considerably brighter. What about color? What colors? Uh, these are both high-quality OLED screens, okay. but the Note 8 screen is considerably brighter. Mm -hmm. I love the pen. I think the pen is a lot of fun. I do a lot with the pen when I have a Note. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, as we saw the low-light camera is uh, the, the software is superior right, right. to LG's. Um, so if I just had to pick one or the other, I would pick the Note 8. But, you know, if you want to go wide angle, and I think that's, yeah. a, that's a personal choice in terms of what kind of photos do you take. Right, and there are very different factors, too. I mean, the Note 8 literally has an included stylus yes. in the phone. If you're never going to so use the stylus, you should a, not get the Note 8. Right, that's, yeah, that's what you're paying for. Yeah, we can take another question. Okay. This phone or the Pixel 2? Uh, we're waiting. We're still waiting to get the Pixel 2. Right. Um, just announced last week. Yeah, the Pixel 2 was just announced last week. We are hoping to get it in and test it. I can't... Well, okay, the small Pixel 2 or the larger Pixel 2? You mean the Pixel 2 XL, which is, in fact, based on this chassis. 
Mm, the reason okay. I cannot give you an answer on that is we need to test the Pixel 2 XL's camera. Yeah. Um, you're going to hear a lot, and you probably are hearing a lot on the internet about bullshit DxOMark results. DxOMark, which was once a decent company, is now basically <laughs> spewing out semi-random numbers into people's marketing campaigns. But JD Power asked. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. That tell you nothing of any value or use. But Google, you know, when they introduced the Pixel, they really talked about the camera. I mean, that was one of the top things. Right. And so they're they're clearly going all in on this camera. Right. Better. And so we need to get the Pixel 2 XL camera in here. We need to look at it in low light. We need to see if it's superior. Right. And then we can make that decision. But we can't make that decision yet because we haven't adequately tested it. Yeah. But I mean, the, the moral of the camera story really is that smartphones have excellent cameras and they're getting even better than they were a couple years ago and you know you're no longer looking at point and shoot replacements you're looking at really amazing No, I think you're looking at point and shoot replacements. Don't get Do you well, want to get Jim in here? Do you want to get Jim in here because Jim Jim will fight you okay. on that. Okay. Well, definitely read the entire LG V30 review because there, we spilled a lot of digital ink about the about the camera about especially the, camera, the noise absolutely. reduction issue. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so do we miss actually let's go ahead and take another question and we'll get to uh, some more specs. Okay. What do we know about the iPhone X camera versus this one, like in terms of the specs we've heard so far? Um, as far as I know, um, I mean, as far as I know, the iPhone X is using roughly the same camera as the iPhone 8 Plus. Um, I believe it may be using the same camera as the iPhone 8 Plus. Um, so then it is very, very similar to the iPhone 8 Plus camera, which is... Um, once more a 2x zoom as opposed to um, as, as opposed to a wide angle and has less of this noise reduction right. problem. The, the iPhone 8 Plus camera and the Galaxy Note 8 camera are very, very similar. We actually have a camera face-off on, um, on uh, uh, our website that Jim did. Right. So basically, again, though, the, 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 the main thing that you're deciding mm -hmm. between is... 2x zoom or this wide angle thing, and that that yeah, but will probably apply right, to iPhone right, X too. Right, but but also but also the question of um, but also the question of um, does this noise reduction issue in yeah. some of the low light photos bother you? Yeah, which you know, you know if you're taking photos at concerts a lot or mm -hmm. uh, you know well at no night. it's it's not it's not even at concerts because you wouldn't necessarily want to use this camera as much at concerts because um, and and I was using it at a concert. And I want something with a bigger zoom. You know, I was I was wishing that I had um, that that I had uh, a, a bigger zoom, yeah. like that I had a real yeah. camera. Right. Um, but uh, but yeah, if you're taking low light photos, uh, the difference between the iPhone 10 and the 8 Plus is that both of the uh, cameras on the 10 are optical stabilized and. Only the regular one on the 8 Plus is optically stabilized, but I think they're the same sensors. Okay. Yeah. So we've got excellent camera with mm -hmm. one minor caveat. Right. We've got an $800 phone here. Yep. Um, 64 gigabytes of storage. Yep. Uh, headphone jack. Headphone jack, yay! Good very, or bad, depending on very your good audio headphones. quality. Absolutely. Um, uh, a fingerprint sensor, well yeah. placed. Anything else that we we should mention about this? Um, so as, as we said, as we said, it's a it's a uh, pretty standard Snapdragon 835 processor. This has gigabit LTE on three. Oh, of, right. yes. On three of the four U.S. Yeah. networks. Uh, it runs on all four networks, but it gets its fastest speeds on AT and T, Verizon, and T Mobile. And in our previous uh, fastest mobile networks uh, test, we did see that gigabit LTE does make a difference on all of those networks. So especially as uh, AT&T lays in its 5G evolution, which is fake, uh, but is gigabit <laughs> LTE, you'll see faster performance on a V30 or an S8 than on competing phones like the iPhone. Yeah. Um, definitely a big plus for the V30 here. Um, relatively heavy LG skin over uh, Android 7.1.2. Oh, so this has Android 7.1. Is this going to get an upgrade yes, soon? Yes, it will get. Okay. It'll get an upgrade at some point. Okay. But LG has to mess up that upgrade first. Yeah. Um, it actually defaults to having no app drawer, which drives me nuts. But uh, as you can see on this device, I return the app drawer. Um, so you can you can kind of bring back some stock Android features if you want. And you could install a different launcher, and a lot of people do. Right. But uh, but it is not the pure Google experience, which is what drives a lot of people over to the Pixel. Okay, people yeah. people get, like that. Get aesthetic. the Pixel too if you want the pure Android experience. Yes, basically. yes. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I, I think, I think that's, uh, that's it for a lot of the details. Do we have any more questions about this? 
Oh, we do. Can you quickly recap for someone that joined a bit later? What's the main differences between this camera and the V20's camera? Because they were complaining about a lot of noise in the V20. Yes, that is the problem here. You're going to so, get some noise. <laughs> yes, the problem here is, uh, as, as we were saying earlier, earlier on the webcast, um, the, our one issue with the V30's camera is um, aggressive noise reduction in low light. And that is a software issue. You can find more details about it in our review. Uh, it only happens in JPEGs. It does not happen in raw images. Um, and uh, we did not compare this directly to the V20 camera. We compared it to other phones from this year, being the Note 8 and the S8 and the uh, iPhone 8, mm -hmm. the other 8s. Right. Um, but yeah, look, look, look at the review uh, to see what that low light noise reduction issue uh, brings to the camera and uh, what, uh, what these images look like in low light. So um, I think we're all good with questions. Um, this is, again, the LG V30. It's an $800 smartphone available now. Great for T-Mobile Roll customers, people who like to take wide-angle mm -hmm. images and, um, and and audio files who think they're going to be able to think that they're going to be able to uh, tell the difference with that magic chip. You gotta love those DAC audio yeah. uh, encoding. So uh, again, the LG V30. Um, this has been one cool thing. Please do uh, ask us any questions that you've got about the LG V30 or any other product. Uh, you can find us at PCMag.com, of course, as well as Twitter or Facebook. And we will see you back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Time for another one cool thing. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.